Hello everybody, in this video we are going to learn how to connect a vehicle detector underground loop to your HME intercom base station. Uh, this is the intercom that is used in drive through uh, communication. Uh, there are too many mis misconceptions uh, that I need to clarify. First, uh, the, the actual loop coil that goes under the ground the same wire that is used for the loop is not the wire that will run all the way inside into the base station. There are two different types of wires. The loop itself is composed of a coil, uh, a single conductor coil, but uh, with two ends, uh, the beginning and the end, uh, but the wire that is used to connect to the base station is a twisted pair cable which I'm going to demonstrate. So this is the single conductor, it's a single wire loop that uh, goes under the ground and it has two wires, the beginning and the end of, the, of that wire. And the other end of this wire is going to connect to a uh, twisted cable. See this? It's twisted cable. Let me switch the camera so you could see better. This is a twisted cable and the other end connects to a twisted cable and the twisted cable which which is probably let's say 100 feet long from the from the loop itself by the way the loop coil is 100 feet long this is 100 feet so this is another 100 feet long I mean it doesn't have to be 100 feet long it, depending on how far the base station is from the drive through uh, uh, menu board. So the other end, which is a twisted wire, comes to your vehicle detector board blue connector. Before you plug it in, we have to make sure that this wire is unplugged. This wire is unplugged and it's not plugged in, okay? Because we, ha we want no power to this when we are doing, uh, doing working on it. The first thing we need to do is we need to get a flat screwdriver. You can, you know, find the correct size. Let me go to a different camera angle. And I see a couple of existing wires there. So I'm going to remove these existing wires. There. And now I will put my wire. It doesn't matter which one goes to which. This is important to note. It, this doesn't matter. As long as it is a loop, I mean a twisted pair. Again, I keep emphasizing twisted pair. Twisted. Twisted together. Okay? But the only twisted up to the loop detector, once it reaches the loop detector right here, then it's no longer twisted. It's a single cable that goes underneath the ground. Okay? Now, if we plug this in, let me switch the camera again. If we, we connected this, now we're plugging this in back to the base. If we plug this in, notice the light is red and it will go to uh, default mode, which is not red. Now, if a car comes on top of this coil, we have a metallic plate. This is a metal plate, a metallic plate which I'm going to uh, put here as if it's a car. Notice as soon as I put this on the coil, the light comes on as if there is a vehicle present. Watch. See the light came on, this light right here, as if there is a vehicle present. I take it away, the light is off. So this is acting at... at as the bottom of a vehicle. Now, if we look at the actual screen of the base station, let me close this so you can see the screen. This is where the car detection will be, the vehicle detection, so to speak. Let me see if I can get that vehicle detection on this camera. This is where the vehicle detection will be. And as I put the plate, let me go to this camera first. So I'm gonna put the plate here. There's my vehicle detection. Watch. The picture of a little car. 
that is this plate acting as if there's a car standing on the coil under the ground. This will be under the ground. Okay, now we will talk how to install this. This is something that we are going to talk right now. Installing this, this wire, because this is moving, see this coil is not supposed to move, this is moving, the inductance changes in, in millihenries or microhenries, it changes, and that's why I get false positive for vehicle presence. It, should, it shouldn't be moving, the vehicle detection shouldn't be moving. And now we will talk about how to install this. Now we know how to wire it here, but now we will talk how to, about how to install this. Okay, so the way you install this is you use a rotary uh, blade, a uh, ro uh, rotary saw uh, with water cooling, uh, diamond saw with water cooling system, because if you don't uh, use a water cooling system, what happens is your blade will heat up to the point that it will melt. Because you're cutting the concrete, remember, concrete is not easy to cut. So you have to have a constant pipe of cold water uh, spraying water on the blade uh, as it's rotating and cutting the concrete. Once you cut, let me grab a pin and show you how to cut it. So assuming uh, this is your uh, drive through let me uh, switch to the camera. Assuming this is your drive through lane right here. This is the lane where the cars come and assuming this is your menu board right here where people order everything you know this is your speaker and mic and all that so th this is where the cars are coming so you use that saw the, a saw cannot rotate in and curve a nice circle you, you cut a nice circle you can't do that so you have to cut straight so you cut a line like this and then another line like this and then another line like this and then another line like this okay that's how you cut now you can't the coil this coil right here this coil this coil cannot have sharp turns so you have to cut another one like this another one like this another one like this another one like this okay and then I'm gonna use a different color your wire will go to in this uh, cut area and then like this and like this like this this is where your wire is gonna go okay and then over it you do that the, I'm, I'm, I'm drawing it outside the cut area but this has to be inside the cut okay inside the cut so if, if we look at it from the side view of of the cut let's assume this is the cut this is the ground and this is your cut your wire has to go like this like this like this like this six times it has to be six times six loops six turns one two three four five six so the wire has to go inside six times on top on the very top you put the sponge and then you pour pavement or caulking whatever to, to hold it um, to hold it in there so it doesn't come out and then what you do is this wire will, will loop six times and then it will have it will have two leftover uh, endings the beginning and the end these two endings here and here will go to the twisted wire which is this guy twisted wire not the same wire okay not this you don't put the same wire all the way to the base station you use the twisted wire uh, and if you don't have twisted wire, you can use, let me show you this, you can use this guy uh, again because you have to run this cable once for microphone and speaker, run it an again another 100 feet or whatever 80 feet you need for the detector. You use two, the ones that are twisted together, so green and white are twisted, black and uh, red are twisted, so you have to choose those. Let me show you. So these two are twisted, so you can use these two, or you can use these two. But you can't use this and this. You can't use that because they are not twisted together. 
you can't use those it has to be either red and black or white and uh, green so then that twisted wire comes all the way to your vehicle detector as you can see here connects to your vehicle detector okay so from here this point forward let me use two different colors here so you know you will have the twisted wire all the way to the base station this is how you install the loop detector in your drive through lane now the, what, what you need to know is first you need to install it and once you connect it you restart the base station so the vehicle detector could detect the uh, default normal inductance compared to the inductance when a vehicle is present so you should always so to make it easier here's how how you're going to do it let me cut again so watch so when there is no car here okay no car uh, let me make take this away so the camera adjusts to the darkness here so when there is no car no car on the coil no car on the coil okay you unplug this unplug this and then without any car present on the coil without any car present on the coil you plug it in so this can get used to the normal inductance with no load without vehicle once this is used to it the, the light will, will be off then when a car comes this is my car right here my de vehicle detection will enable and just so you understand how the vehicle detector works the vehicle detector works in the following fashion let me zoom so you understand so this is the vehicle detector cable when there is a car present all the, the detector does is short circuits the black and the ground when the black and the ground is short circuited it means the vehicle is present when it's not short circuited it means the vehicle is not present see there's three cables black uh, clear and red the red is plus 12 volt provides power to the vehicle detector board and this one is ground and this one is uh, this one is ground and this is the vehicle detection cable line and when the de vehicle detection cable is shorted with ground it means the car is present now you probably say well this is very complicated is there a shorter way to do a vehicle detection Yes, the shorter way is that you do not need the vehicle detector board uh, as I showed you, like this, this board, you do not need it. You don't need this board at all. This is out of the circuit. The loop is out of the circuit. You don't need this, you don't need that. You need, do not need any of these. Instead, you will need a BGI uh, RW100. I'll show you what that is. This is a BGI RW100 uh, board and let me show you this from an angle here. So this BGI RW100 uh, detects the vehicle without the uh, need of a loop. So it simply con uh, connects, you, you, you mount it like this, you mount it like this in the drive through lane and when a car comes, there is no need for this loop anymore. So when a car comes, this sees it and it informs the base station that there is a car by doing the same exact thing as this vehicle detector is doing. This is like only $150 where installing a loop, just cutting the concrete will cost you probably more than a thousand. So that's an easier solution for it uh, that, uh, than doing the cutting the loop, uh, cutting the socket, uh, the concrete. And uh, when a car comes on the loop detector, the, uh, the headset will stay engaged. As soon as the vehicle leaves the loop detector, the headset will disconnect because the customer already left the drive through order lane or, or the menu board. He already left the menu board. He is proceeding to come to the order window. So that's why the headsets will cut off. The same is true with this guy. When the car is in front of it, it will let the conversation continue. It will keep the headset engaged as soon as the vehicle moves away from it, it will disconnect the headset. 
So that's how you do that uh, vehicle detection connection. And this is true for all HME base stations, all of them, uh, including uh, Panasonic and 3M base station. All right. Thank you for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe.